Hello and welcome back to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about myocarditis. So myo meaning muscle, cardio meaning heart and itis meaning inflammation. So myocarditis is the acute or chronic inflammation of the muscle layer of the heart. Just to recap the different layers, we have the endocardium, the innermost layer of the heart, the myocardium in the middle, consisting of muscle cells, and the pericardium surrounding the heart. Many cases of myocarditis are asymptomatic or present only with mild symptoms, but myocarditis is one of the leading causes of spontaneous cardiac arrest in athletes. So it is a quite important topic to know what it is, how to diagnose it, how to treat it, what happens really in myocarditis. So let's go ahead, talk about the etiology, about the different kinds of myocarditis, also about the pathophysiology, the symptoms and the diagnosis. So we can differentiate myocarditis in either infectious myocarditis or non-infectious myocarditis. And infectious myocarditis is usually to around 50% caused by viruses. There are different viruses which primarily cause it, and that's the parvovirus B19, the Coxsackie viruses A and B1 to B5, and the human herpes virus 6. Then different bacteria like Staphylococci, like for example Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococci, like Streptococcus viridans, which we also talked about for endocarditis. I can link you in the endocarditis video also different enterococci and also Borrelia burgdorferi, which is the causative agent for Lyme disease, which is a tick-borne disease, which you probably know, it's recognizable by this red ring around the area where the tick was biting. Then it can also be caused by fungi and protozoa. The fungal myocarditis is especially seen in immune-compromised patients and is caused by Candida albicans, Aspergillus and Cryptococcus. And protozoa that cause it are Trypanosoma cruzi, which is the causative agent for Chagas disease. And this is the main cause of myocarditis in South America. Also tos Toxoplasma gondii, which is especially dangerous for pregnant women and their fetuses and Trichinella spiralis, which, which is a parasite that goes into the muscles and builds a calcified cyst uh, there within the muscle. And since we talk here about the muscle layer of the heart, these calcified cysts can also form within the heart tissue and can cause uh, infection or uh, granulomatous inflammation there. Then non-infectious causes of myocarditis. Here I want to first talk about autoimmune diseases like collagenosis as in systemic lupus erythematodus, granulomatous diseases like in sarcoidosis, and vasculitis, rheumatoid arthritis or the acute form rheumatic fever. Then toxic causes of myocarditis are chemotherapy for the treatment of cancer, as well as cocaine, ethanol, which is a part of alcohol, and lithium, and also physical factors like heat or hypothermia or radiation can cause myocarditis. And also there's a last cause, which is eosinophilic, so a hypersensitivity reaction to medication. Eosinophils are usually seen either in allergies or in reactions to foreign bodies. They can also sometimes be seen. So in hypersensitivity reactions to, for example, penicillin, sulfonamides, tricyclic antidepressants, methyl dopa. So for different medication, it can happen that they cause uh, myocarditis. And now I want to talk briefly about the pathophysiology of viral myocarditis, as this is the most common form. So the pathogen enters the myocardium via special receptors, 
for example, the Coxsackie adenovirus receptor. And as the virus enters the cell, it already starts to damage the cells. So at first, the immune system responds with an unspecific immune response, leading to a rapid release of cytokines and also the proliferation of specialized lymphocytes. And um, then the consequences or whether or not there will be a complete healing depends on the immune reaction and how quickly the body is able to downregulate the invasion of these pathogens. So if the infection persists and the cytokines are released over a longer time, then there will occur this cardiac remodeling. So this is kind of like a scar formation because here the tissue is replaced by fibrosis and hypertrophy. And this is a secondary damage due to the invasion of the muscle cells, the cytokine release and the apoptosis of the cells that were invaded by the viruses. And this kind of damage can be seen in 50 to 70% of all myocarditis patients. And also another reason for attack is molecular mimicry so that antibodies to certain pathogens mismatch with their own cardiac cells in the body. This, for, for example, occurs in rheumatic fever, where there's a group A beta hemolyzing streptococcus, where then the uh, own immune system attacks the cardiac cells because the antibodies to the pathogen look the same way as the cardiac cells. And in around 75% of acute myocarditis, the antibodies are found within the cells of the heart and then later disappear when the patient is better and the healing process occurs. And in chronic myocarditis, it can even happen that there are OT antibodies generated against the beta-1 adrenergic receptors. Now I want to talk about the different symptoms. So often myocarditis is asymptomatic. It's often seen in young adults, which are affected a few days to around two weeks after viral infection. And sometimes they present with fever, fatigue, cough, pain in the extremities, myalgia. So kind of feeling of general malaise and it can mimic also a common cold, for example, or a severe flu. And also the cardiac symptoms can mimic the signs of heart failure when uh, dyspnea, dyspnea and edema are seen. And also other cardiac symptoms that can be observed are chest pain, palpitation and arrhythmias. And sometimes there's a third heart sound or a murmur, which can indicate that there's something happening within the heart. This is also the way we can diagnose a myocarditis. So by the ECG and the echocardiography, when we can see that there's changes in the waves and also in auscultation, when we hear the murmurs and the third heart sound, for example, then very important in this case, or very important in general for medicine, of course, is the anamnesis. So if the patient says that he or she just recently had some infection or uh, felt a little bit sick or weak or like his or her body was fighting something, then that can already be an indicator that there might be a myocarditis, especially when it doesn't when the patient doesn't present with other comorbidities. And also an indicator is to take a blood sample and make a laboratory diagnosis because the creatinine kinase, the troponin and the leukocytes will be elevated, indicating that there is uh, some damage to the heart with the elevated troponin and an inflammatory process indicated by the increased level of leukocytes. I hope this video was helpful. It was a little bit longer than my other explanatory videos. But I just wanted to mention all the different points 
If you liked the video, I would be very happy if you could subscribe. And you're more than welcome to see the other videos also, or leave some comment of what you would like to see. That's it for now. Please remember to subscribe.